How to push through when things are looking ugly. Today I'll be continuing with the theme of these Asian inspired paintings that I've been working on. I'm going to be starting this one slightly differently insofar as I am using a, an acrylic base and doing some localized stains for the individual areas that I'll be working on. This is something I used to do a while ago, but it's not something I'm going to repeat again anytime soon. I have got quite accustomed to doing a raw umber undertone for the entire piece, but I just wanted to try this out again. However, it did not have the intended effect I was going for. I did it primarily to try and get to where I was going slightly faster to establish some local value and color in particular areas. But in fact, it ended up just looking like too much of a mess and was quite distracting until I got it completely covered up. Now it didn't derail me or send me completely off the edges. This actually ended up being uh, the final result anyway, a painting that I'm really quite pleased with. But it took a lot of pushing through to get to that stage. At the moment, you see me blocking in a lot of the preliminary background work, just trying to get the areas filled in and established um, and done as neatly as possible before I start working on the figure. And I really am, because of how I started the piece, I feel like I'm doing a lot of triage and cleanup work. Also, I didn't like the design of the ribbon flowing behind her. So you'll see that I'm actually painting directly into it so that I can cleanly lay over a fresher design on top. Now this really did take a lot of perseverance because something that is very specific to this piece are the fact that there are a lot of hard architectural edges and getting a crisp architectural edge is actually something quite challenging to achieve in oil because it's so buttery and it stays wet for so long. I almost feel for me personally I need to work that up in several layers to get that clean edge for the various brickwork, the slats that I'm trying to achieve. That takes layers in building up and I have to mentally allow it for it to be somewhat ugly at various stages before I get that clean architectural look that I'm going for. And here coming up, you'll see the midway shot that I took. Once I had pushed through and cleaned up the background, it wasn't completely finished, but I can definitely move forward. Now you'll see me coming up here, redrawing the ribbon. I'm doing something very specific. I am laying down some test swatches. When mixing a color, there are several things that are happening. You're probably looking at a reference, looking at your painting, looking at your palette and trying to synthesize all three things together. But likelihood is they're all in different spots. You've got your painting right in front of you, maybe you've got your reference off to the side, you've got your palette just beneath you, and your brain is trying to adjust to all those three things and then get one right correct mark. And you'll do your absolute best to create the right mix on the surface. Maybe you're working on a white palette, a gray tone palette, or a wooden brownish palette. So the color that you mix is going to be contrasted at whatever value or color your palette is, but you're still trying to make a mix that is in relation to the reference that you're seeing and where it goes to the painting. Which is why whenever I'm mixing and working on a new area, I very rarely have the full confidence that whatever I'm mixing, it's perfect. But I do a test. And with that test, I now have context. I can see, okay, it's either to this, to that, to dark, to light, to warm, to cold, to red, to whatever. And I can try again, make a remix. Not quite right, do it again. And then I'm happy. And then I lay down a proper stroke. And you might've seen this happen in several of my other videos, but more or less, whenever I'm working on a new area, I lay down a little test and then adjust accordingly. And then I can go in and create context of which I can then react to, to see another area. Okay, that needs to go darker, that needs to go lighter, etc. I actually planned this piece uh, a long time ago, around November last year. 
I did thumbnails, I found the reference that I wanted, and I really carefully did some proper planning for this. And, and I was so excited about finally getting to execute this piece. I had a hierarchy of things that I wanted to do, and I finally got around to it. I was so excited. But for whatever reason, some kind of mental block, it took a while for me to really get into the flow state when executing this. Every initial pass felt, I don't know why, a bit of a slog, and I felt quite mechanical and that I just wasn't painting well. Why I couldn't tell you. It's like, why do some days can you go to the gym and you feel like a bull in a china shop? You're on point, you're great, maybe you slept well that night before, maybe you ate well that day and you got tons of energy and you're just completely on point. Another day, it's torturous and you just feel like a slog. It's inexplicable. And that's how it was for this painting. Something that I was really looking forward to felt like such a chore to execute for a while. It took a lot of just pushing through. I keep, I've used that term couple of times in this video but it, it really was it was sitting down and doing the job of getting paint on the surface just getting through it to a point where I I was liking where it was going um, and every first pass of every area whether it was the background whether it was the sash where is it whether it was the blocking of the face of the hands it all looked so ugly <laughs> um there's really no mincing words in it i i just really wasn't like it and i i knew it was going in the right direction though it's it's odd is as much as i thought it was ugly i i could at least see that i was creating context i was creating relative context for which good work was going to go on top which kept me sitting down every day to do this and throughout the whole thing this this painting took about seven days um, of working on it every day straight through um, but it really was uncomfortable and to get through that it takes a lot of trust trust in yourself trust in your experiences my personal experience is doing a lot of bad work and figuring out how to make it better or at least figure out how to make the next one less rubbish and i'm not trying to be self-deprecating but it's true i have found the way to good paintings are doing plenty of bad ones and acknowledging what went wrong and figuring out how to fix them or figuring out how to not make the same mistake like really analyzing and figure out how to not make the same mistake in the next one and so I just trusted myself that I knew how to make it right. And you'll see me now going into the second pass of the face. I'm now no longer working on that totally ugly, messy acrylic underpainting. I've created some sort of base context to which to go lighter, darker, cooler, warmer on. And so this second pass is where I started to feel somewhat okay started to be able to breathe properly again i was like okay i don't suck i'm not amazing but i'm competent I, I i can do this and honestly that just might be how it is no matter how good you are at whatever it is that you do no matter how seasoned you are sometimes it's just rough sometimes you just have to push through because not every day is going to be rainbows and unicorns at this and I imagine that that's the case for people that have even decades of experience on me and it's going to take trust in your abilities in your experience that you can push through and make it right um, and that's what I did with this I was like I just I'd done it before so I can do it again that's literally what keeps me getting in the chair every day to sit down to either finish a piece make it right if it's going wrong or carry on if it's going well 
Um, there's literally those the, the three scenarios. And I think it's important that when things start to go well, I'm going deep here, when things start to go well, allow yourself to acknowledge it because it will give you fuel to keep going. Um, you can apply that to just a single painting or treat that to the macrocosm of your whole artistic journey or whatever the hell it is that you're trying to do. We get encouraged by our own success and that helps keep us moving forward in whatever it is that we're trying to do. If we're trying to paint a face, if the eyes went well, then you feel good about moving onto the nose. If the nose goes well, you feel good about doing the mouth. Um, when your painting is going well, or if you do a good painting, that's going to give you confidence that the next one is going to be good as well. Or at least it's going to give you the confidence that you did a good painting. If you mess up the next one, you just did a good one. So you can do a good one again, so you can fix one that is going badly. <laughs> Or at least that's what I tell myself. It's partly why I can't stand that old adage of, if you do what you love for a living, you'll never work in a day in your life. Such garbage, because even if you do do what you love for a living, it's still work. It, it isn't rainbows and unicorns every day. It isn't easy. It isn't just water off a duck's back. It's a slog, it's a struggle a lot of the time. And some days it's marvelous, it's brilliant. You're in flow state, you're in that ideal time is non-existent feeling. Um, and others, it's like you're, you're feeling every second ticking on the clock and nothing is going well. It's still work. You're still trying to achieve something that is creative, what you love, but also a means for paying your bills and putting food on the table. To say otherwise, I think is naive. Now at this point, I'm starting to speed up the video because it was on this day on the third layer of the face is when I finally reached that flow state where things were clicking, when I was starting to genuinely feel good about the painting. I wanted to speed up this video so you could see the majority of what I'm doing insofar as you can see every transitional stroke that I'm making as I work within the dark areas to the lighter areas and I start to mold stuff. It's where I actually genuinely thought, okay, things are going to work out. I've done enough pick and shovel work that I can genuinely see it's going to be all right. And it's taken a while for me to actually feel okay about that insofar as part of me would love to be able to mix a color in the exact value, in the exact chroma, lay it down in the place where it's supposed to be perfect first time, bam, there it goes, and have a painting come to fruition like that. But oftentimes, especially on this occasion, it took several layers for me to be able to see the roadmap properly. And just on the technical side of things, unless you're really laying down thick impasto marks, the oil is still somewhat transparent. I have used very little titanium white in here, which is a very opaque color. So it might seem opaque, the strokes that you're laying down, but layers underneath are affecting the top layer. It's not like you're glazing, it's not like a very thin velatura, I think the word is, veil of oil with a bit of pigment in it. Although I do do a bit of that. It's, it's still somewhat transparent and layers underneath are having some relevance to what is showing at the top. And I hasten to use the word detail simply because how would you define detail when painting a portrait? Is the detail painting an eyebrow or is it getting that refined, subtle transition of a core shadow on the cheekbone? That's up for you to decide. It's why I'm, I'm not a huge fan of people talking about painting details because it's details are just 
a particular level of refinement and and how deep in on those particular things do you get and with each additional layer that goes on top we're going to be able to add a layer of, of subtlety a layer of more variable adjustment to create the illusion of reality that we're going for or, or the the degree of reality that we're trying to represent and on that top layer it really gives me an opportunity to push the contrast just a step further by further deepening those shadows and punching up those highlights a bit with a bit of glazing and scumbling to make those final adjustments. Now the days when I got to work on painting the hands is when I felt pretty good. I'd, I'd locked in the majority of the painting, it was going well at this point, and this is when I really got to have some fun and treat the hands like this mosaic or a, a jigsaw of color and just identify those warm and cool transitions see that I had bounce light coming up from the sleeve I had this warm core shadow running down the index finger and on the thumb but there was this cool bounce light coming in onto the wrist and ulna and then there was this warm direct light hitting the rim area of her of her wrist this was just a good time painting that and we've got that light reflecting off the ribbon and I want to get that red bouncing into the crevices of the fingers and we've got that subspecular highlight that red glow a bit of a halo effect around the bottom of the palm this was a really enjoyable moment of the painting I have to say and it's because I did persevere that eventually I did get to have a good time on this painting I got to push through the hard bit I had put in an enormous amount of energy of getting things working, getting the relationships to look right, to get my marks to look how I wanted them to look, and every good mark gave me confidence that the next one will be good as well, that I would lay the stroke down in the right place, that I would get it in the right value. Then the penultimate thing that I did on the painting before letting it dry was slowing down and enjoying myself working on the design for her kimono. And I wanted to get this done and let the whole thing completely dry because on the very last day of painting is when it came to painting the petals flying around her. This didn't take very long but it was possibly one of the more stressful parts because I'm so happy with the painting at this point and now I really need to not mess it up and I want to just hit these petals. I had pre-designed where they were going to go and I didn't want to fuss with them. I just wanted to lay them down in a stroke or two if necessary and have them indicated and create some movement flowing around and there's not more than about three values to each of these petals this is an initial stroke to get it down and then I lay down a bit of a, a light side a highlight and a shadow side to each of them just to finish it off now as we come to an end, I just want to say thank you very much everyone for watching the video. I hope you've enjoyed seeing me paint and listening to me talk. If you have, please remember to press like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. If you want, you can go to Patreon and support me there where you'll find an extended version of this and many others. Thank you so much everyone and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.